breaking welcome to today's headlines my persecutors planned to drug undress film me among prostitutes my persecutors planned to undress drug film me among prostitutes to my dear listeners from wherever you're listening from stay tuned as i read today's news fiery catholic priest and founder of adoration ministry enogum reverend fr agk imbaka has said that his sudden disappearance sometime in 2021 was meant to hack him to death by those he said were persecuting him. The cleric also said that the plan was to take and drug him, undress him before prostitutes and film him, where he would be seen frolicking with prostitutes before hacking him to death. Umbaka also said that he never asked anyone to vote for Muhammadu Buhari as the president of Nigeria during his 2015 prophecy. Umbaka was invited to the bishop's court after asking President Muhammadu Buhari to resign or be impeached in May last year. With the presidency firing back and alleging that the cleric was angry because he sought to secure contract from the Bari led government and was denied. During his invitation to the bishop's court, his phones went off and nothing was heard from him. After several hours, a development that forced his followers to besiege the bishop's court and demand his immediate release. Explaining what happened in that incident in his 2022 New Year message during the cross overnight at the Adoration Grand, Emene Enogun, Umbaka said the people who caused his disappearance wanted to give him to Namdukanu treatment. He told the congregation, the day you went on rampage looking for me, they would have killed me that night. The way they took Unamdukanu was what they planned to do to me. They would have picked me up and drugged me and I would be acting under the influence of that drug. But the Holy Spirit already gave me an order on Sunday night. It is that kind of order that is called supernatural mandamus. The Holy Spirit told me never to park in a place for 20 minutes. You know, I was given an order not to come into this adoration ground for 30 days. I was invited for a meeting, and on my arrival, I noticed that it was a panel that was sitting before me. It was on that panel that I was ordered not not to conduct adoration again for 30 days. They also said that I shouldn't come into my house for 30 days. I told them that I didn't have any toiletries, took brush and even money to buy them, and that I would need to get home to pick some things before going, but they refused, and yet I obeyed. But the Holy Spirit told me to be careful with my obedience and never to park anyhow. I never knew that the Holy Spirit already knew that I was under watch. I parked my car in front of St. Joseph and went to pray for like 15 to 20 minutes. I never knew they were tracking me that night. Before the next morning, 
when you people started looking for me. Their plan was immediately, they picked me up, they would take me to Kubana Junction, where they would parade me among prostitutes. They would also show a video where I was frolicking with prostitutes. The question would have been, what was Umbaka doing in this kind of a place? From Kubana, they would have taken me to the one in front of Ingo Easy, where prostitutes also stay. This was, this was where they had planned to undress me. The question would have been, what was he doing there, he asked. The priest disclosed that the grand plan was to, was to take him to Abuja and kill me along the road. He, however, withdrew, withdrew the apologies he gave to Enugu Catholic Bishop Callistos Onaga after his disappearance last year, saying the reverse should be the case. His words, I was apologizing after everything that happened, but two days ago, I was asking myself why should I be why should I apologize to anyone? I shouldn't have apologized at all. They should be the ones to apologize to me because they wronged me. They should be very careful. Otherwise they will get the treatment my uncle got for always beating my father before us and his children when I was still a little boy. This Uncle kept beating my father till he lost one of his teeth as a result of the constant beatings. And on each occasion, my father would keep crying and I would do nothing because I was still a young boy. When I entered secondary school, I joined Taekwondo training to enable me to gather enough skills and tactics to fight back for my father. I was still leading block Rose Rail and Christmatic very well. It was after I was ordained a deacon that my uncle beat a tooth out of my father's mouth. In my uncle's mind, I would still do nothing about that because I was already a deacon. But I returned home to teach my uncle a great lesson he never forgot in his lifetime. I used him to show off my taekwondo skills and he found himself crying and begging for forgiveness. To my dead listeners, from wherever you're listening from, please do drop by at the at the comment section and let us know what your view is all about. Thank you.